Hello there, EK Jonathan here. Uh, this is my first ever podcast. I wanted to try this out um, because some of the things that uh, sometimes I want to write on the blog I feel like might be easier to express vocally, um, which I know is a little bit odd since I'm a writer or I'm aspiring to be a writer anyway. Um, but sometimes it's just nicer to be able to express things and, and talk about them. And I feel sometimes the format of the blog and having to compress everything into little paragraphs doesn't quite work uh, for me. So I'm going to try this out at least for one episode. This may never happen again, but if you um, are hearing this and you and find yourself enjoying listening to this podcast as opposed to reading uh, the blog, please let me know uh, either through the comments or commenting on the blog and uh, maybe I'll do some more of these in the future. So for this first podcast, um, what I want to talk about is what I just posted about on the blog regarding the book All Things New, the first book. Now back in this November of 2017, I had made an announcement on the blog that I would be discontinuing uh, that book, uh, both on Amazon as a digital copy and as a paperback. Uh, the reason for this initial decision um, was twofold. Uh, on the one hand, I felt that the book had aged somewhat. I started writing it in 2010. I kind of got seriously into it in 2012, and I finished it in 2013, which is the year it was released. Well, it's 2018 now, going on 2019, and some of the things in the book to me feel a little bit uh, dated. Uh, it feels like our current understanding of certain things has kind of shifted a little bit in a different direction for some of the chapters. I won't list specific things here. Um, I probably wouldn't think of all of them anyway if I had to. Um, so I wanted to update the book, and I, and I still want to update the book. Um, so that was one of the things that I was thinking of at the time, is that I wanted to take it down and work on it and release a new updated version of uh, All Things New. Call it something like you know, version 2 or edition 2 or second edition, something something along those lines. Now, as you may have noticed, uh, that book is still available. Although I did release the Kindle version of the book, or I did, I'm sorry, I removed the Kindle version of the book on Amazon, I left the paperback version up. Now, why is that? It might seem a little bit strange. You might be wondering, why did he go back on his word? What's the reason? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The first reason, the main reason, is that um, All Things New is still being worked on by translators in various um, non-English speaking countries. Uh, some of you may have noticed that there is a Swedish version of The Unrighteous that is now available on, um, on Amazon. And there are other language versions being worked on for All Things New, uh, including French, a Spanish, um, Czech, and there's a few others. So because those translators are still working on the book and they're all at different stages and obviously they're not doing this full time so I don't expect immediate turnaround on these books but they're all working on it and using their time and volunteering for this so by removing all things new from my catalog and sort of kind of throwing it away and starting over with a new book or revising it um, it would kind of put them in a, in a tough spot. I felt like that ultimately would be a little bit uh, unthankful or a little disrespectful to those translators who've already invested time translating parts of the book. The other issue is if we did decide to release those uh, foreign language versions of All Things New, there would be major differences between those foreign language books and the updated, you know, second edition or version 2.0 of the English. Uh, version of all things new. So those are a couple of issues that I started realizing would create a lot of complications. Um, the book, uh, All Things New, I decided at that point to go ahead and take off the Kindle version but to leave the paperback version. Now that also might seem strange. What's the point? Why not just take them both down or leave them both up? My reasoning behind it, and I don't know if this was the best thing to do, I'm learning as I go through this. Um, this is kind of uncharted territory for, for me. Um, but the reason I did that is because I move a lot more Kindle books, or I sell a lot more Kindle books, uh, downloadable, you know, digital books, than I do paperback books. Um, obviously, the paperback books are much more expensive, 
uh, they require shipping fees and printing fees and binding fees and all these s sorts of things. Whereas the Kindle book is a, you know, it's a digital um, and they download it immediately. It doesn't take any resources to provide it. So it's much cheaper. Um, so those books move a, a lot more. So by ending the uh, digital publication, but preserving the paperback publication, in, in my mind at least, uh, it made it so that it sort of kept out uh, a lot of newer readers to the book um, while still leaving that book in my permanent catalog. Uh, typically, I found that people that are coming into reading these books for the first time will not buy paperback books. They will buy the Kindle book because it is cheaper and more convenient, obviously. Um, and that way they can check it out. If they don't like it, they can return it for a refund uh, or they can delete it and it's you know no, no real big loss for, for them. Um, whereas people that already know the books and enjoy the books will go and invest in the paperback versions. So again, by removing the Kindle and not the paperback, it was still uh, preserving that in my collection of books while at the same time kind of not making them as accessible to newer readers. So I felt in that way it was kind of damage control, if you want to say it that way. Now this doesn't mean that I've completely abandoned the idea of doing an updated version of the book. Uh, I still want to go through and do a kind of version 2.0, probably with the same name, but same name as all things new, but call it maybe you know second edition or, or whatever. Um, I feel like that's probably needed in the future. But there's so many other things that I'm working on right now, aside from even the books themselves, some other projects that I hope to make an announcement on soon. Um, I just don't know how realistic it is that I'll be able to update that novel in the next year or even two years. Uh, I think another thing too is as someone who's got ideas and is working on different projects, it's hard to go back and then revisit something from the past. Um, it's definitely more enjoyable and uh, more appealing to continue to create new things uh, for, for readers. I think one of the big reasons that I had also decided or had made the announcement to release or to remove the books from the Amazon store was from um, a few negative things that I had heard from various readers. And you know, it's funny because going back and really thinking about it objectively, um, you know, if you get a hundred really good comments, very positive comments from readers saying things like, oh, we were really encouraged or it really helped us to think about the future. Uh, my favorite comments are the ones that say, hey, we know this is fictional and we didn't think everything was really realistic, but it helped us to think of our own, uh, our own visions of the future, our own ideas of what it's going to be like. Those are my favorite because I really want these books to be that to not replace or to substitute people's own ideas for the future. I never want this to be something that's dogmatic. I want it to be something that people can um, use to kind of spark their own creative ideas or spark their own um, imaginings of what the future will be like. So those are really my favorite. But you know, you get a hundred of those really positive comments uh, and you get one negative comment and in some cases, not just negative, but um, a little, um, maybe, what's the word? Um, not just negative, but a little bit uh, harsh or, or really severe and critical. And I don't know the situation with you know the people that are writing. I, I assume they are our friends. <laughs> They're not just you know trolling me. <laughs> um, but. You know, we don't know what the situation is with them if they're going through some difficult thing in their life or if they're really offended because of some little detail that they misread or misunderstood or they have their own strong ideas, whatever the case is. Um, when you get one comment like that, it's funny because you forget all the hundred you know, other positive comments and you just kind of focus on this one comment. And there was one particular thing that I had read that was so... Um, I guess difficult for me that I actually lost sleep over it and I remember just thinking over it again and again and thinking man I made this huge mistake oh, I got to take these books off I got to go through and, and all this and forgetting about all the positive things that were said so I think that this experience of writing the books has has actually really helped me to develop a thicker skin because while we want to keep in mind our friends feelings um, absolutely and not stumble anyone and be respectful of others. 
there is a line there where there are some people that no matter how careful you are and how respectful you are um, and how kind of you know daintily you walk <laughs> or tread on certain subjects, they will still give you negative feedback. And that I think is goes for anything, any any creative project, anything that you're doing, whether it's related to you know witness stuff or non-witness stuff, whatever. It's, you'll always find those people who you know, for lack of a better term, you know, want to hate on <laughs> on what you're doing. So I think I've learned from that not to take everything so seriously to um, receive criticism with a grain of salt. I do feel like criticism is so important and I welcome it. Um, whether it's positive or negative, I don't mind, you know, negative criticism. Um, but so long as it's constructive, that's that's what I really am looking for. And if it's someone that just is really, you know, disgruntled or whatever, then it's probably, it's likely that they're going to be disgruntled with no matter what w was written. Um, does that mean I should stop writing these books? Well, that that's an option. Um, but I certainly feel like there's so much positive feedback from what's come of this that it's worth continuing. So anyway, that I, this kind of rambled a little bit, and I have a feeling that these podcasts, if I continue to do them, will be slightly rambling. Um, but I do enjoy talking about these things because there is so much to say, and sometimes it doesn't fit into a neat little blog post on the uh, EK Jonathan blog. So again, the whole reason why, why All Things New is still up is number one, um, people still really enjoy reading it. The vast majority, I would say more than 99%, maybe 99.5% or 99.8% have enjoyed it, but there have been some that, that have you know had major issues with it. Um, and the other reason is for translation. Uh, out of respect for my translators, out of respect for those who will read the translated versions, uh, I don't want to rock the boat too much. I don't want to change things and then, you know, possibly uh, upset them or make them just abandon, you know, wanting to, to translate any future future work. So again, this is a balance. It's a project that I'm learning a lot as I go through. Uh, learning a lot about myself. Learning a lot about uh, the community. <laughs> Um, and but I've enjoyed it. It's been so positive. So many good things have come of this. I really appreciate all of the comments and feedback that I get, both through email, um, through the blog, um, and then sometimes through people saying things to me in in person. So I really appreciate that. I'm not trying to create you know a celebrity status around myself, uh, which is why this is an audio version, not a video version uh, of this podcast. Um, but I really do appreciate the feedback that I get. So again, thank you so much for, for reading. And in this case, thank you for listening. Um, and uh, yes, we'll see you next time.